now that we have and know how to build this uh, icy snowy mountain high field let's let's go and check out how i made the uh, the textures uh, using cops so let's dive into this cop to net uh, node and see and as you can see again the techniques are pretty similar uh, with few changes here and there so uh, this is our node network that we're gonna kind of run just run through uh, of course again we start with the uh, SOP import node let's just switch to the again to the composite view so we can see what we are watching and looking at and I'm importing that final uh, null uh, as you can see and I have all the uh, the layers and, and actually all the planes uh, right here so from that node, uh, first I build the height replacement. I delete all the planes except from the from the height. I rename rename that to C, and that's my output for for height for for displacement. Uh, but there's also one more kind of mass that I need, uh, which is basically the uh, the snow layer mask. That one is uh, derived. Uh, from that slope or or, or snow uh, uh, mask that we did, so I deleted everything uh, except from that. As you can see right now, that distortions really uh, give us just the the nice edge. Uh, I just renamed that to to C and blur it uh, a little bit, just so it's a bit uh, nicer. So it's not that uh, that harsh when I use it in the uh, in the shader. So a blur, and that's our kind of uh, mask for the snow on top of the entire mountain. Uh, mountain. You'll see how we use that a little bit later uh, once I show you how how I set up the uh, the shaders. So moving on to the actual uh, uh, color, uh, again, uh, starting from that height and going into the warp to cop uh, uh, filter, uh, sampling the gradient uh, from an image just to get some basic uh, colors to, uh, to, start, to start with. Uh, I'm deleting the, the, the height plane to keep things uh, clear. And then now I start adding uh, all the other col uh, colors uh, there's a lot of snow so I'm adding first the the snow layer using that uh, slope mask uh, it's basically just the uh, almost uh, white color uh, in the composite node set to uh, over uh, so I know that it covers uh, covered a lot of the color that we set uh, with this rob to cop but uh, it's fine we'll get some of that uh, back a little bit later uh, this is of course the white it's, it's time to add a little bit of uh, variation so um, uh, a, a uh, fully black uh, color, uh, which is then uh, kind of uh, multiplied, uh, but at 0 0.22 cent to 73 uh, levels uh, of uh, of opacity. Uh, but for that, uh, I use a mask, which is actually derived from the flow. Uh, which was uh, uh, renamed and composited uh, with one more node, uh, which is actually a height. And then uh, again, Bob to Cop filter. In this case, uh, it's not a color ramp; it's just a spline ramp. Uh, output it again into the to the height. So what I'm what I'm using this uh, this swap to cop is to actually select the parts uh, of the of the height using a, 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 a ramp uh, basically. So going from this uh, to this, I isolate only the higher parts of the uh, of the uh, of the mountain and composite it uh, with the flow. So I just kind of mask out the parts uh, of the of the flow uh, plane where I don't uh, want it. And after that, I ran it through a levels uh, adjustment to uh, just get a better, uh, better mask. And that uh, was used here, uh, actually, uh, to kind of darken the uh, the snow in, in the bottom parts of the uh, of the mountain and leave the peaks uh, still like pristinely, pristinely white. Uh, so we went to like this fully white snow uh, to a little bit of more uh, dirty snow, uh, as you can see here. Uh, next, I wanted to add uh, snow uh, flowing a little bit more. So we went from this, you can see like these parts here, are maybe the most affected, to this. Come on, select uh, like these black edges uh, of the uh, uh, of the. Uh, mm. So and from this. To uh, this, darkening some of those sharp uh, rocks which are protruding uh, out of the of the snow. 
Uh, I used the white color in this case, but only because the actual composite was uh, uh, was set to uh, uh, to multiply, and the mask was driven uh, actually by the uh, edge filter uh, running on the uh, actual height height plane. Uh, so I just run the edge at uh, this type mod hildred. Uh, at the size of five to those get those very hard uh, uh, edges, but that's fine. That's exactly what I needed to uh, to get these uh, edges. As you can see, uh, this is the uh, settings that I used. So uh, I kind of liked the the whiteness of it, but it, I felt it was too monochromatic, and it was time to add a little bit uh, color variation to uh, everything. So I wanted to introduce a little bit of, of, of blue, uh, which is this color uh, right here. You can see the settings. It's very light blue, like ice blue, uh, which I want to introduce into the color. So going from this uh, uh, to this. See better now, from this uh, to this. Just adding a little bit of blue uh, inside can improve things a lot, a little bit. And I wanted to add it in specific areas, it was like ice uh, flowing down the side. Uh, so for that, I again I created the mask based on the flow uh, direction. So this this is my flow direction, and use the flow di direction x uh, as a mask, and I run it through uh, through levels uh, to get this uh, mask over uh, over here. And then I another composite node uh, set on on screen uh, to get this blue mixing in uh, both on uh, on snow and on on, on rocky parts. Uh, next, it was kind of time again to dirty up the snow a little bit more. So I want to add a little bit dirt on top. As you can see, it was like too cold in certain areas. So this was the color that I used. Um, this very, I don't know, very kind of uh, bright dirt uh, color, uh, which was mixed in with another composite node, this time in and over, uh, with a foreground weight of 0 0.629 and the mask uh, set to uh, uh, debris. Uh, and then uh, let, me sh let me show you the mask. So that mask was actually this, uh, which is a debris uh, layer from the imported uh, uh, planes, just vanilla. Uh, that's it. That was used to darken up the uh, the snow a little bit uh, in specific areas. Uh, again, the uh, the noise added just for some color variation. You don't see that much in the final output, but it, it's it. It adds a nice uh, detail if you really look uh, look for it. You see, like we went from like very very almost monochromatic to something which adds a little bit of color variation uh, everywhere. Uh, again, I did build a mask for that one uh, as well. The mask was uh, uh, same as before, uh, driven uh, from the uh, height plane, uh, run through uh, an uh, edge detect uh, node on the Sobel variant. Uh, and then inverted so uh, and run through levels uh, to basically get um, this this mask, which is a cool looking mask. So I'm only not adding uh, on very sharp uh, slopes any of the uh, of the color variation. So the flatter the the train is, the more color variation it uh, it gets. And this is the the result for uh, for that. Next thing was. Uh, darkening up a little bit of the of the crevices, uh, I used like a simple black color for that. I think this was full black, yes. And the compositing node was uh, was set to uh, to multiply. The mask for that uh, was uh, built from the curvature that we built on the top level, uh, which was inverted because I wanted crevices, not uh, edges, and level adjusted to get the ones that uh, that I need. Um, Black color multiplied to get this darkness in the in the crevices. Uh, on top of that, uh, it was time to add a little bit uh, whiteness, uh, same as before, but this was like very subtle to set it out over uh, with uh, almost well, actually full white color. And the mask for that was um, actually built from uh, float there, right? Uh, let me just double check that. 
so this is the mask that we are looking for yes so again from the uh, flow dir uh, direction z uh, this time uh, ran through levels and then uh, warp to cop filter this case uh, what i did is just kind of multiplied it and subtracted it uh, with some with some noise just to add uh, variation so i i brought in the the flow direction mask and i uh, made some noise and i uh, subtracted it to add uh, uh, variation so uh, you can see this like a very small variation that you can see here so it basically went from this which is very simple to this uh, subtracted vari uh, variation uh, with the noise and that was the mask for uh, adding just a little bit of color variation here you can see it is maybe subtle but i think i would like to believe that all those details like end up showing in the final render so we went this to this like nice color variation of this of the snow like patches and i think this was the final uh, step which was just adding all those cartography looking uh, details uh, as a multiplied uh, black color uh, uh, on top uh, the actual details were built uh, exactly the same way as as, as before uh, using those uh, grids uh, which add the text to get those uh, thin lines in different uh, scales and using a quantized node uh, to get an Azure Tet again to get those height based uh, uh, baseline. And this was the final uh, uh, composite and this was like subtracted to get those lines looking uh, dotted. And that was the uh, final color for this uh, kind of icy uh, biome, uh, as you can see. And I think it looks uh, pretty cool. Nice. Now let's next video we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, the scatter details uh, for our IC high field.